So I'm pretty sure all of you guys love Tailwind CSS as I do and as many other developers do. It makes our lives easier, it's simple to use, and we don't need vanilla CSS anymore. But have you ever wondered what type of plugins you can use to 10x your developer productivity when it comes to Tailwind? Well, in this video, I'm going to explore some of these plugins that can make you a more productive developer. Likely for us, there's this awesome list in here that's called Awesome Tailwind CSS that actually offers you and gives you literally all the awesome stuff on libraries, tools, plugins, or even ID extensions that you can use for Tailwind. For example, if you click on plugins, you're going to find a variety of plugins you can use from like typography to container queries in here, or what you can basically use with forms, the themes, CSS variables, and so much. So I really advise you to go ahead and look for that. You can just type in Awesome Tailwind CSS in GitHub, and you're going to find this awesome list. So first plugin of the day is called Daisy UI and it's a component library made specifically for Tailwind CSS. And it kind of gives you the chance to use pre-built components in here right into Tailwind CSS with simple to use classes from, for example, alerts in here, like accordion, maybe artboard, avatar, so much more. It literally has more than 55 components. And installing this one is very simple. So you just go to the docs, install in here, and you're gonna find how to install this one. So you simply install the library in here, Daisy UI at latest, and you import this as a plugin inside of your Tailwind CSS config. So you head over to tailwind.config.javascript in here, as clear as in here, I'm importing the required Daisy UI. So as clear as in here, have Daisy UI imported in here and a bunch of other plugins you're gonna explore throughout the video as well. And when it comes to the usage, it's pretty simple. All you gotta do is just use the right CSS or Tailwind CSS class alongside your regular Tailwind CSS classes. For example, I wanna do a card, so I can just label this container as a card and I can label it as a glass in here to have like a glassy sort of transparent kind of like background for the card. And when it comes to, for example, oh, I want the card body, I can just label this as a card body, card title, uh, for example, card actions in here, like for the buttons and stuff. And so much more, for example, for stats in here, you can just select stats, stats, stat figure in here. If you just, you know, the image or the icon for the stats card. I mean, there's tons and tons of stuff in here and you can learn about every single class that you can possibly use and how to use it in the combination from the docs in here. So if you head over to the components, you're gonna know, oh, this is actually the components. For example, the bottom component in here and it tells you immediately that you can use the button components in here, button neutral, primary, secondary, info, success, and so much more. And even it gives you like simple, easy, kind of like examples in here or demos that you can easily copy with HTML, GSX, or even the preview of the different buttons in here. You can, you know, explore and stuff. Maybe you're looking for a responsive button. This is how you basically do it. So I find this super easy when it comes to you want to bootstrap a, you know, a new project using Tailwind CSS and want to do something quick. You don't want to reinvent the wheel. Daisy UI can actually give you all the components that you need without going ahead and actually reinventing the wheel, creating those components, or maybe installing this large or huge sort of like React component library or something. You don't do that. So just installing Daisy UI with Tailwind CSS and using the right class made for that. Believe me, it's going to make your life a lot easier. And I've used this so many times. And I really, really like this one. Alongside like over 30,000 person. And with a few lines of code, I was able to put something together like this, even though it's messy, but I've got something cool. Now, the other plugin in here is Signals for Tailwind CSS. I mean, this lately has been going wild and a lot of developers, including me, really enjoyed using Signals because it literally made the same axis of Tailwind CSS in here and accessing like ancestor states quite easy and super, super enjoyable. As we all know, CSS, like when you deal with descendants or ancestors kind of like state, it's not really cool because it's pretty ugly when it comes to CSS. So you have to do a lot of chaining and a lot of weird syntax. But with signals, it kind of like clarifies a lot of stuff and it makes it more declarative. So for instance, you can go ahead and check this simple example in here where we've got a simple checkbox in here and we've got a container in here. So what we want is simply to turn this box in here into green whenever we hover over it or whenever this checkbox is checked. So if you check the checkbox, it turns to green, or if I go over it with the mouse, it turns to green as well. So either way, we wanna activate this one. I mean, it may seem pretty simple. I mean, the hover in here is pretty simple, but the checkbox in here is pretty tricky, right? 
Let me tell you why it's tricky. So if you go ahead and check the actual code in here, so you've got two components. The first component is without Tailwind signals. The second component is with Tailwind signals. The first one actually has an input in here, like a sibling input, and that input has another sibling, which is the div in here, which has, you know, that text or that particular container where we want to turn it to green whenever we hover or the checkbox is checked. So when we're checking if this sibling, sibling in here is checked, we go ahead and turn this into green. So how are we doing that? We're using this kind of like syntax using Tailwind CSS where you do, oh, if the child of this particular container of this div like the child of this div which is this one if it's like has a, a hover over the parent div in here we want to access that particular child and we're going to turn the background into green on the other hand for the checkbox we're just going to like name this as a peer we're using the peer kind of feature from tailwind css to be able to use siblings so we're just naming this as a peer and here we are using if peer checks which means if this checkbox has a check state in here we access in the sim the the child kind of like div right over here and we turn the background into green i mean it's pretty ugly syntax but when it comes to signals if you go down in here we're still using the period in here to check it out but now what we're doing is actually doing peer checks and this is actually how we create the signal by doing the colon in here and we name this our signal i mean this is the most simplest name of the signal but you can give it custom names we're going to see that in a second and we're also doing oh if you hover over that one we're also going to put that instead of the signal and by the way both of these are the same signal so we're just like putting everything the hover states and the peer checks on the same signal so later on with the signal in here we can say signal so if that signal is checks on this particular element the elements where we're going to apply the style so if that signal is particularly activated we can just go ahead and turn that background into green and as simple as that whenever we check it out in here it turns to green or we go over it with the mouse and again that's simply because we have the hover in here and we have the peer checks in here both put into the same signal now for a little bit more advanced example in here we got kind of like the same thing we got a checkbox in here whenever you click it this turns into green or you go over this kind of like outside container it turns to green so but when you just like hover over that particular bar and it doesn't change or anything but if you actually keep clicking that one like you activate this one like press and hold this turns into purple with this unicorn sort of like emoji so again using the help of signals and this time we want to actually give custom names into our signals we can make that happen super super easily so here we're actually using custom names with our peer so we're saying peer checkable so we're giving this particular peer a checkable name and we're giving this other peer in here like peer hoverable and remember peers just mean siblings of particular you know because we, we just like want to target this particular button in here so that means that the siblings of this button which is this div and this particular input so down over here on the button here we want to actually create an active state so it means if this button is active which means we're like clicking and holding the button we're going to create a signal that is named custom so this is actually how you name your signals or give them a custom name by just you know doing the signal keyword and a forward slash and you give it whatever name you want and here what we're doing we're checking if peer is checked for the checkable peer which means this particular peer the input in here so if it's actually checked we're going to create that into a signal in here it has no name it's just like named as signal I want to do the peer hover hoverable in here into the same signal as this one which is just named signal now later on remember now we got two kind of like signals we got a signal with name custom and we got another signal just with the name of signal later on in here inside of the button itself or the div that is actually inside of the button where we're going to start with things up so we can use signal custom so if that signal is activated we can just go ahead and turn you know the background into purple and actually activate that same thing like signal custom in here and you do the after kind of pseudo elements and put the content of that into like a unicorn you know a way to change the contents and here we're simply doing the signal or stuff so like if the signal is activated for the whole robot of the checks not the actual click we turn you know give it a content of this you know terrified sort of emoji and for the signal in here we just turn the background into green i mean it is actually that simple and signals make it look a lot easier to deal with and one quick thing for signals in here remember that signals are not widely supported just yet because they actually depend on the style queries which is an experimental feature in most browsers i know for chrome and a bunch of others are actually supported but for stuff like firefox and opera i think opera now has a partial support safari has a partial support but firefox is not like fully supported just yet so you can wait a little bit longer so i'm not sure if this should be used in production use case just yet but i'm pretty sure you know like an update for firefox and most of the browsers are going to be having these features sooner rather than later oh boy the other plugin is really interesting and i fell in love with this as soon as i started using it 
So the plugin is named Mixins for Tailwind CSS, it's actually from the same author as Signals, but this has a completely different way of dealing with stuff. You can imagine this as like variables for JavaScript or variables in any programming language, basically. So again, you install this pretty much the same way as you install any other plugin, just npm install Tailwind CSS Mixins and you import that inside of your Tailwind CSS or Tailwind.config.javascript. Now, let's imagine we've got this simple form, you know, kind of like component in here where it has a username input, a password input, and a submit button. And the most important part is actually two kind of like paragraphs in here, one for arrow if you sell it, oh, if you didn't enter a valid username or password, just like gonna have like an error message or something. And here it just tells you like a helper message, oh, please fill out the form to continue or something. So if you look back in here into our component without mixings, oh, what is like the traditional old way of doing this one, I mean, you can do this the same way. So like, for example, you do flex for the form in here. Let's say this is the H2 for the login. We don't care about that. Now for the error in here, you say, oh, I'm gonna put this as text left, text, you know, small or extra small in here and give it like a rent of 500. Input in here needs a margin bottom two and like a padding four or something. And basically both of these two inputs have literally the same style in here. Like I'm just like repeating myself in here. So I'm just putting the same style kind of like twice which makes it very ugly if you need to change one style like at one place. So let's say you want to add, oh, I want to add a like a background red or something 500. I got to go ahead and actually do the same thing in here on the top for the other input, which is not very practical. For example, in here, if we fill out the form in here, I'm pretty much just using basically the same thing for printing that one. The only difference is actually the color. So you kind of like find a lot of similarities, a lot of redundant sort of styles or classes are being reused and repeated over and over. I mean, with mixins, you don't need to do that anymore. So for example, this component here that uses mixins. So if you notice on the top in here on the form, we actually declare a bunch of mixins with custom names. For example, mixin input, I'm naming this mixin an input, pretty much the same custom naming as Tailwind uses for peers, groups, or as we've seen in singles before. So I'm just naming this mixin input, I'm giving it margin bottom two, the same thing for input, I'm giving it rounded LG and the input as well for padding of two. Now I'm actually creating another mix in here, it's called info and I'm giving it text left and I'm here, the same thing for the info and I'm giving it text extra small. Now later on, it's creating for the two inputs in here, actually they share the same style. I don't need to repeat myself, all I do because I created a mix in like a variable on the top in here, on the parent form, obviously. So I only gonna go ahead and actually do, do mix in input. So just call that variable in here and the styles will be applied simultaneously. And basically the same thing for, you know, the info in here, mix in info, I only just apply whatever color you want. And the same for the error mesh in here, they basically share the same mix in. So yes, mix ins are pretty cool. And the last one for today is members, which as the readme in here states, members for Tailwind CSS offers an inverse functionality to the built-in groups feature of Tailwind CSS. So because Tailwind CSS has already a feature called groups, members in here is actually the inverse functionality of groups. So again, you can basically install this the same way as it did before and you use it the same way. And when it comes to usage in here, you can imagine, for example, we've got this container, which is, you know, this is actually the text that is inside of the parent container. And what I want is actually, this is, you know, the checkbox in here is actually a child, or you can call it like a descendant of the parent container. So what we want, we want to style the parent container depending on the descendant state, which is in our case, the checkbox right over here. So like whenever we click, we turn the background into green and the background in here is actually the parent's div background. Here's actually what it looks like without members and with members. So without members in here, basically do the same thing, but we use the has variants from Tailwind CSS to check, oh, if it has, and we check like the child form, which is a child of the parent div in here. So if that form is valid, valid, we simply just go ahead and do that background or turn the background into green. But with members in here, you don't need to go ahead and use that custom CSS or anything. The code is just going to make it look a lot easier and, and simpler, of course. So all you got to do is actually you want like whatever descendants you want to have or access its states from the parents elements on top in there. So you simply do just go ahead and mark that particular element as a member. So you give it a class name of member, basically the same thing with peer or groups, but the inverse way. And once you do that with member, you can actually literally go ahead and access that member from any parent or any ancestor. For example, member valid, which means this form is valid. If it is valid, you're just going to turn the background into green for the whole diff or simply for the whole parent's container. 
well, you can read more about that on GitHub and read me about like exactly how it works with the different examples. I'm pretty much sure it's gonna be a lot of updates coming up next because now it's still basically in 0.0.4 and most of these plugins are made by the same guy in here. And I really, really like these plugins. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. There's been plugins for Tailwind CSS that's gonna actually make your life a lot easier and probably gonna make you a little bit more productive. See you all hopefully in the next ones.